Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Sokka here with another episode of Kerbal Space Program 1.2 for Absolute Beginners. When we last left off, we launched a monstrosity rocket up into the sky with the destination of EVE, and it is currently right now um, just outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence, but we're going higher up, which isn't exactly conducive, but then we're falling back down to meet Eve in 132 days. So let's go ahead and fly the spacecraft and see what we've got going on. Very important here to make sure that uh, our craft loaded correctly, that the solar panels are indeed out. And in fact, looks like we can rotate the craft just a little bit more to face the sun. That way we have absolute um, electric charge of 50. We have just a touch of fuel left in this stage, and then we are going to be using uh, this stage right here to slow down and insert into EVE's orbit. If we go to the map view and we look at our orbit, right now it's only a matter of time and only a matter of waiting. And it looks like if we just left the craft to its own devices, we'd swing by EVE here, and then we would be sort of thrown downwards and then be almost on approach for Eve, not, not exactly, that is a quite the distance, but no need to worry about that. Let's go ahead and go right next to the node and warp here. We're going to go one, uh, what is that, 100,000 times normal speed, and the days will click by very quickly. We're gonna to start to go under Kerbin's orbit, so we're picking up speed around the sun. There is Eve coming to join us, you can see uh, the altitude going down there and it's only a matter of time until we sink into its sphere of influence and we will get our first look at another planet of the solar system here and we're still two hours away from there let's warp till right next we don't want to be in time acceleration when we cross the encounter to give the computer uh, maximum time to uh, calculate the encounter, make sure that it is exactly where we told it to be. And if you time warp across this, um, there may be some rounding errors that occur. So we will slow down uh, once we get about 30 seconds out and just sort of ease into the account encounter here. 10 seconds, six, five, we're gonna see our nav ball flip. Two, one, and bam. We are now in Eve's sphere of influence. You can tell because uh, our blue line is now going around uh, Eve and we can see our Eve escape. We also see Eve's moon of Gilly. Now Gilly is a fun place to go. It's a place, it's essentially a big rock that is captured around Eve. And if you manage to land on it, um, just a jetpack will be enough to put you in orbit around Gilly. Very, very minor. But what we would like to do is sort of adjust our approach here to where we're coming around on the equator and on the sunny side of Eve so we can see what we're doing. That is going to take us pointing to the left relative to Eve. So there is Eve shining nice and purple. If we go radial out, we can see that it is actually going to point us sort of over the top of Eve, which we don't want. So let's go with normal. There we go. The ship will rotate, and this is firing directly uh, lateral to, to Eve. We're approaching it this way, and if we were to burn here, we can watch our orbit uh, shift as well. So let us burn just a little bit. We can see the orbit of Eve changing. It should be heading to the left. And as a matter of fact, let me check to make sure that this has 100% thrust and it doesn't. There we go, 100% thrust. And we are out of fuel with that stage. Let's go ahead and stage once more and press the, uh, the space bar once again whenever we're ready to fire our engines. Let's see what that did to our orbit. We are coming down a bit, so let's go ahead and use our other marker here. Yellow. 
Let's use our other marker to point downward here, which that isn't the way we need to go. And I don't know why the game is being difficult right now. Why for you be difficult, game? All right, so let us go. Let's burn a little bit here and see what that does for us. Holy crap at the performance of this thing. All right. Let's space bar. And speed up a bit. We should be able to see our orbit change. Here we go. Our apoapse is increasing, so let's go back down the other way which we want to go, I guess, radial in. Here we go. And then this will push us back down. And we're just going to keep on going until we see uh, the orbit sort of pass by the equator. Let's focus on E for a moment here. Let's zoom out, set our focus to Eve. Well, let's focus view on Gilly, and then focus our, well, because our orbit is encountering us. Matter of fact, we should be able to work from here. That is no problem. So it looks like we're going to come down over the top. Uh, if we were to burn, say, retrograde here, that's going to just slow us down, so we don't want to do that. It's just messing with the normal and the anti-normal. Okay, that's not the way we want to go. We definitely want to flip normal. And we want to come around the side. And then we want to go radial out. And we should see a, there we go, a periapsis rise. Now, it, it'll be just a minor, minor change for us to... Um, get within a hundred thousand and probably about 80 is where we want to go so let's go down till about 80 and now we are on a course to fall into Eve once we get into the atmosphere we can ditch this stage and proceed on as normal let's time accelerate up get to Eve's sphere of influence or er, to Eve's atmosphere here Eve is growing awfully big, but just like Kerbin, once we get within range of its atmosphere, it'll automatically slow us down. So here we come around the uh, left side of the planet. Our orbital speed isn't that fast. I mean, it is pretty fast, don't get me wrong, but it could be a whole lot worse. Make sure we're still on task to fall in. Looks like we are. Yeah, our periapsis is 78, so we are looking good as far as that's concerned. If we wanted to, we could turn retrograde and uh, make sure that our heat shield hits the atmosphere first. And since we know we're here, we can actually spend all of our fuel to slow down so we're not hitting the atmosphere as quickly because we're coming in at 4,000 meters a second which is pretty fast, I must say. And it looks like we're going to clear this purple lake. So, more power to us. Let's go ahead and just use up all of this fuel while we can. And then that will put us in a, um, in a trajectory to fall down to Eve, which Eve has a lot of gravity and a very thick atmosphere. If you plan on coming here with a manned mission and getting home, you really, really, really need a big stage at the bottom to even escape this place. It's the, the biggest challenge for Kerbal Space Program players, I think, to launch a manned mission to EVE and then escape the atmosphere and return home. So any soil samples that we bring back is probably going to be uh, just transmitted away. Almost out of fuel here. We've slowed down enough and Stage one last time. And now we will sink into the atmosphere. 
and let's see how the atmosphere treats us. We should be hitting it. There goes our, uh, our other stage. We're using the SAS to keep us retrograde, although we're balanced enough, I think, that if we turned off SAS, yeah, the capsule will sit nice and pretty. The ablator is going to start really getting hammered uh, because of our speed that we're entering this thick part of the atmosphere. And, I mean, just look at this. It's not even that thick, and we are taking a massive toll on the heat shield as it is. We are not safe to deploy our parachute yet. We have to scrub off a lot of speed, but luckily once we start getting to this thicker part of the atmosphere, we're gonna start slowing down quite substantially. We're up to two Gs now on deceleration, and that's only going to climb as we dip further and further into the atmosphere. If we were to look at the map, we can see that our apoapsis has essentially dipped below uh, where we are now, so we are going to come down this time. Ablator is holding up well, we're not even halfway through it, and we're really starting to see uh, some shock heating. We're not even on time acceleration, as you can see, we are in for a bumpy ride. We were up to almost 10 to 15 Gs of deceleration, but now we, we've gotten into much thicker atmosphere than Kerbin is at this point, but we are still have a lot to fall. But we have got it slowed down enough. We are going to plummet to the surface. There is no more heating. We can time accelerate. We're falling down to the surface. It looks like we'll have a nice lakeside view uh, for our landing. And you can really start to see once we hit this thicker stuff that our, um, our terminal velocity is really going to start uh, falling down. All right, we're really starting to pick up uh, some atmospheric effects here, which our parachute is not safe to deploy. Uh, what we can do is we can look at our radar altitude here in the cockpit, and we can see exactly how high off the ground we are compared to the, uh, the surface. And you can see our surface speed dropping and dropping, and we're still over 3,000 meters above the surface. We've got some aerodynamic effects. Even at 178 meters a second, it's too fast for this atmosphere to be um, conducive. So that can give you an idea that when you take off, you can't be faster than this without experiencing heavy aerodynamic effect. But we are slowing down. Uh, terminal velocity for Kerbin was about 230 meters a second or so for a capsule such as this. But as we start sinking, uh, this is going to drop even probably below 100 meters a second, and we're not even to the thickest of the thick right on the surface. Looking at our radar altitude, we're still 3,000 meters above the surface, so no chance of smashing into the ground yet. We are slow enough for parachutes, but I usually deploy at 2,000 meters or so. We can see ground scatter now on the surface here. We're, we're starting to drop. We're now 2,000 meters above the surface or thereabout. So we will pop the parachute and it looks like we will be about 1,000 meters above sea level when we touch down. SAS is not on. We're letting the rocket do the work. Matter of fact, we can jettison the heat shield and decrease our weight even more. And at that time, our parachute deployed. There goes our uh, heat shield right there. It's going to smash into the ground. We may lose sight of it, it'll get out of our range, but we should see an explosion. There's its shadow right there, you can see it uh, right there. And bam, our heat shield has impacted. We are going to land at less than three meters a second. And you can see how long it actually takes. The parachute is deployed and we're only falling at three meters a second to get to Eve. There is our shadow. And Maella will be the first Kerbal in history to touch down on another foreign body. However, um, she's not getting off this rock. There, you know, obviously no engines, no fuel. She's just uh, destined to stay here on the purple shores of Eve for all eternity. But eternity won't last too long because I think we will be ready to go career mode next time. If you have mastered all of these skills that I have showed you for this tutorial, then career mode will be fairly easy for you as far as fulfilling contracts and, and doing all that. 
Once we touch down, our parachute will automatically be pulled in and Moella can take her first steps on the Evian surface. It looks like a pretty flat area to land as well. Here we go and touch down on Eve. Moella is safely down. We could get a crew report here, which was just recording our uh, assessment of the situation. And now we can EVA and repack the chute. Why not for tidiness? And let's climb out. Here we go. Maella is here on Eve. Now I will jump. That's all the jump we got just right there. Let's put on the jetpack and see what kind of... Eh. We have no oomph to get off the ground. This thing takes a tremendous amount of Delta V to get off of, but Myla can at least plant a flag. The final flag of the tutorial series, and we can put the site name Stranded, and it feels so good because we have essentially um, landed on another planet and it's got a nice view. I mean, purple's a nice color, but that is going to do it for me in this tutorial series, ladies and gentlemen. If you're thinking, wait, you didn't cover this or you didn't cover this, no worries. Career mode will give us an opportunity to do those things. Uh, space planes, give us an opportunity to do rovers, give us an opportunity to um, hop between biome and biome, an opportunity to get science and you know all sorts of fun stuff and that is where the meats and potatoes of this game really lies is in career mode so go through these tutorials if you had some trouble get familiar with flying the spacecraft transferring the spacecraft between uh, Kerbin and Minmus even if you ju are just fine going between Kerbin and Minmus career mode will do well for you but that is going to do it for me in this episode, ladies and gentlemen, for Maella Kerman and her strandedness. Uh, that's going to do it for me. So like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. And let's bid Moella goodbye. And we will see our new intrepid group of Kerbals next time in 1.2 Career Mode. Take care.